a lot of the intelligentsia were killed off because they weren't suited to dealing with physical labor. Chapter three, or muzzled freedom. Free life was inescapably influenced by the archipelago. Literature wasn't written in this time period because people couldn't write the truth. Society was influenced in different ways. People lived in constant fear. Recruitment to the archipelago happened all the time. People were afraid of not only arrests, but inspections, questions, expulsions, not being able to have a residence permit. People were aware of their own insignificance and the non-existence of rights. They weren't open, but they were secretive. One woman lied that her husband abandoned her rather than say that he had been arrested, for example, and they kept secrets from family members. And they also would shun each other when they did speak, frankly. I want to give a quote. Nadezhda Mandelstam speaks truly when she remarks that our life is so permeated with prison that simple meaningful words like they took or they put inside or he is inside or they let out are understood by everyone in our country in only one sense even without a context people became servile they didn't take risks stool pigeons or informers they were so common that everyone was suspect and this intentionally by design so distrust among every kind of relationship between parent and child between man and wife, between children, between colleagues, and people would also ignore when other people were going through hard times. And that's because anyone who concealed an enemy was an enemy. And if you continued your friendship with an enemy, you were an enemy. And so in a big city, people would feel like they were in a desert. Children were orphaned and betrayals between every kind of relationship there is were common. Another quote I would like to share is this. Those who were not alive during that time or who do not live today in China will find it nearly impossible to comprehend and forgive this. In ordinary human societies, the human being lives out his 60 years without ever getting caught in the pincers of that kind of choice. And he himself is quite convinced of his decency, as are those who pronounce speeches over his grave. A human being departs from life without ever having learned into what kind of deep well of evil one can fall. Just saving family archives or helping a fugitive on the run, that was an action against the state. And the people who were bold, they were arrested early. And so in that way, the soul of the country died from the beginning. The people who were left over were the ones who were corrupt. There was a mechanic who let someone into his home and then he was arrested because the person told on him for praising German machinery. It's like, it's so absurd. The, the absurdity doesn't mean anything. It's just an outlet. It's like people have issues going on in them and they will find a way to let it out. I mean, if the rest of society lets them. Like, it, it's absurd because it's not about that. You know, it's about what's going on inside of people and then finding a way to release release that instead of healing it. And I would say turning to God for help. But another thing that would happen was that students of former professionals would steal their work and then claim that work as their own. Lying was a norm because you had to lie to exist. That's not actually true, but that's how people felt. People had to lie about what they cared about, what made them angry, what pleased them, how they felt about sending their children away, who was smart, Stalin, and so on. Cruelty was another thing that was common among people because of the society, because um, you would be punished for having empathy or for being kind to others. And then people would also use their power over others by threatening them with arrest. He also mentions a story of one relative spitting on another relative in the face just because they got on their nerves. That was a difficult story to read. Millions of women lost their husbands and sons to prisons and they were treated badly and they would try and go and find them or send food parcels or visit the graves but not be able to identify them or they died before prisoners were released. Children who were barely able to write would send letters to their fathers that were never delivered. 
You know, I'm just going to pause here and mention that the breaking down of human bonds is something that is purposefully done really often. Uh, when I say purposefully, I do literally think that there are people who try to pull strings, but I also think it just works through regular people because they, you know, maybe everybody, like you have trauma and then you don't deal with it. And then like, that's a way to get you to do things that if you're thinking clearly because you're not, when you like have things you haven't dealt with to get you to do other things to other people and what i was thinking about as i was reading this stuff is that i think social media does that i think it breaks down bonds between people one it captures your attention so you're not spending it like with actual people around you not everybody but it, it's definitely does that just from the way it is and the way our minds and emotions work and then you're also arguing with people, so it pits people against each other, and you, you can't interact. Like when we interact, it's I don't know how much, like 70% or something of our interaction is non-verbal. Like you are missing so much. Like you're not smelling the other person, you're not actually like hearing like the inflections in their voice. I mean, everybody knows this, but like you think it doesn't matter, but it does. Like when you're interacting with people, which is how so much of our interaction happens nowadays, especially with lockdowns and stuff, you're not fully being human. Like you're not fully experiencing their humanity. And I think that is really important. And I hope to see the world like turn away from that. Um, I, I don't like think anything is inherently bad. Like the internet and social media is all great. But these things are not good, and I do think that they are being used nefariously, because you it happens very slowly, and you like I I just want to say it's like advertisements or something. Like you think it's not important, but it's really important. So I'll get off my pedestal now, but just wanted to mention that. <laughs> There's a cute letter here, and that a boy sent to his father, and I will just read the end of it. Otyashenka. Hello, Papa. I forgot how to write soon. In school, I will go through the first winter. Come quickly because it's bad. We have no Papa. Mama says you are away on work or sick. And what are you waiting for? Run away from that hospital here. Oh, Yeshka ran away from hospital. Justin, his shirt. Mama will sew you new pants and I will give you my belt. All the same. The boys are all afraid of me. And Ot Yeshenka is the only one I never beat up. <laughs> he also tells the truth. He's also poor. And I once lay in fever and wanted to die along with mother. And she did not want to and I did not want to. Oh, my hand is numb from writing. That's enough. I kiss you lots of times. 